all the CVs are there. The, f uh, the first speaker I would like to honour is Canon Peter Challen from the Council for Christian Justice. Peter, over to you and welcome. Thank you. Please turn off the mobile phones, those who haven't. I think we meet uh, within the context of the universal search at the heart of human experience for inclusive justice, but we haven't done very well. And in this place where many titles, earned and unearned, abound, I choose to address you as peers of the earth. That may be more than realm, unless of course it is the realm of Allah, the realm of God, the realm of natural law and ceaseless creativity. But we are united in our earth identity, having equivalence of dignity in the eyes of God and having between us inextricably a great variety of skills to be put to the common good. Welcome to this dialogue. I'm speaking generally and the technical, skilled, committed people will follow. I set the theme with words by Adrian Rich. My heart is moved by all I cannot save. So much has been destroyed, I have to cast my lot with those who age by age, perversely, with no extraordinary power, we constitute the world. I don't know how to put it more neatly, more profoundly than that. In the face of immense complexity and the need for genuine humility, let us acknowledge that there are serious question marks over isolated expertise. That is why I appeal in opening to our common earth identity and do not emphasize our achievements to date and the titles that accompany them. There is a sense in which we must together imagine, design and implement a thoroughly ecosystemic economy to ensure humanity's continuing stay on earth. A matrix, that is, a womb nurturing new life, of such transition has been eloquently set out in the New Economics Foundation new booklet, The Great Transition. I meant to bring it and wave it before you, but forgot. The need for such transition was unconsciously anticipated in an essay 400 years ago, which began a fly sat on the axle of a chariot and said, what a dust do I make. <laughs> the essay was on vain glory. And that has grown prodigiously over those 400 years. Because of such rampant vain glory or hubris carried on chariots of power and monopoly, together with the accumulated weight of institutional conceits, the human predicament is now dire, more dire than most people can bear to acknowledge and admit. It is beyond your healing or mine. Only in coalition for the common good, for inclusive justice, can we find any realistic hope of sustaining life on this planet. That same writer 400 years ago said people of age object too much, consult too long, adventure too little, repent too soon, and seldom drive business home to its conclusion, but content themselves with a mediocrity of success. Hope is not in a mediocrity of success, but in the restoration of societal sanity and the creating of ways of exchange that work for everyone and protect the earth in the now global human and other species community. It can only lie in serious transdisciplinary exploration of common purpose. Peer review entirely within a single discipline is highly dangerous to common purpose to universality and to inclusive justice. George Bernard Shaw quipped seriously, every profession 
is a conspiracy against the public. In the great timeline of philosophy and religion, common purpose is persistently expressed with utter simplicity, yet carrying an immense burden of responsibility. Love God and love neighbor. Expanded in the light of contemporary quantum physics and quantum theology, that means love the laws of nature and your interdependent relationship with all species. In that context, the human predicament is dire, deeply, deeply so. Our systems have mocked natural law. Vested interests have blocked inclusive justice, building up their defensive structural weight over many centuries. Whatever we discuss this evening must take account of powerful drivers affecting all new investment criteria for individuals, for <coughs> groups, and for institutions. Growing obscene disparity between materially rich and materially poor, ecological degradation and species loss, population growth, climate change, food deficit, toxins in air and water, geopolitical shifts, advances in information, communication technology, swings in economic activity, almost inconceivable levels of debt, that is bluntly theft from the future. The magnitude, velocity, and simultaneity of these unharnessed forces are unpredictable. This unpredictable persistent series of disasters will either continue to degenerate into destruction and or totalitarianism, or they will finally awaken everybody all at once. Therefore, in the fierce urgency of now, let this evening ensure that we measure everything in the context of natural law and world-spanning inclusive neighborliness. Any lesser perspective sinks into hubris, vain glory, and myopia, into a death wish vainly defending vested interest. Mm -hmm. We may think we are looking at an environmental crisis or a sustainability crisis or a financial crisis or a social crisis, and this mm -hmm. we are. But much more deeply, what we are experiencing is a crisis in values, a moral and ethical crisis of enormous scale. Only a recognition of that deeper crisis, the crisis that comes to a society that lacks cosmic spiritual purpose, can set us on the path to recovery. All the regulation in the world will just be circumvented by people who are unconscious within the greater dream. It is my conviction, accrued in 50 years of ministry in search of public truth, that we are trying to change deeply embedded core beliefs towards a hugely more generous concern for and introduction of inclusive justice. If we cannot do that, our practical ideas are not important and will never add up. They will be resisted as much as an atheist resists God. We must find a way to convince people first that robbery, either through money or land ownership or both, is immoral and unsustainable. Presently, the masses simply do not believe it, not to mention the elites. In the fierce urgency of now, let us proceed in humility and in pursuit of inclusive common God, good expressed imaginatively in structures of <coughs> true justice. As the World Cup of football international fervor fades, let us determine the imminent arrival of a World Cup of compassion and inclusive justice. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>